this honestly is as exciting of a time as Tennessee fans have been able to experience in a long time. And there were a lot of good times on Rocky Top. The Tennessee baseball team just had a terrific season. Tennessee basketball has done a lot of good things. But when we joke about it being a football school, it's not really a joke. It's a football school in terms of what drives the most emotion. And right now, Tennessee is riding high with a big opportunity. And it's a lot of fun to be talking about this because we haven't talked about Tennessee-Alabama mattering, especially like this, in a long time. And it's good to have these conversations again. Yeah, um, you know, it, it's kind of funny. This is one of the topics in the Monday night chat or chat over at ballquest.com this week. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's nothing compares. Like, I'm the biggest baseball fan. You and I both love the Braves. We love watching baseball. We love watching, you know, game 46 of 162. But but nothing compares to football and nothing compares to being involved with a good football team. Your radio show, my podcast, my work at ballquest.com, uh, you know, the fans. The university, Spire Sports, collect. I mean, ev- like when Tennessee wins, everybody wins. I mean, it truly does, and nothing compares. Baseball was fantastic, and it was great. Basketball mm-hmm. is awesome, but nothing compares to a winning football team. It's not even. Uh, it's not even. It's night and day, to be honest. It's unfair to compare the other sports to football. Tony yeah. Vitello is terrific. He's terrific in, in every way, in my opinion. I think he's the total package in terms of a coach. We'll see what he ultimately accomplishes over the rest of his time at Tennessee. But he has a huge salary at Tennessee right now because of his success over the last couple of years. He would not have that salary if not for what football means. I mean, it still drives everything else. So uh, it's just it's unfair to baseball, basketball, Lady Vols, if you want to try to compare them to football. Football is what drives everything. Everybody recognizes that. Danny White, especially knows that and you know fans I think watching and listening recognize that as well and that doesn't mean the other sports don't count they matter in a huge way and they matter as much at Tennessee as anywhere in the country we talked we we joked in the summer about the everything school because of what was going on at Kentucky that's true though the the other sports get a ton of support that's been shown but it's it's not all about football it's mostly about football and, and football is back in a huge conversation national spotlight game day returning uh, for a second time this season and that's just that's great to see it it helps us as you mentioned too my radio show what you're doing with with VolQuest and Locked On Vols and other Knoxville media as well there's more attention on what we're doing which is always good see you put it in the perfect terms you said the politically correct answer I, I, you made me look like I'm just like ah baseball doesn't matter basketball doesn't matter see I mean, that's why you're the pro you've been doing it forever and I'm just some young stupid guy uh hey LSU game, Tennessee whooped them. I mean, from the get-go, man. I mean, that yep. was the that was the most complete game of the Josh Heupel era. Special teams was so big. Tennessee's run game was so big. The defense, what a bounce-back effort. Um, jo- uh, Josh Heupel, uh, Hendon Hooker did not have to be Superman, um, mm-hmm. and you still won 40-13. to 13. I mean, just a complete beatdown of the Bayou. Yeah, last week on the radio, we had some Tennessee fans saying, hey, we're going to blow them out, and – Jason Swain and I were like, "Uh well, be careful about that kind of expectation. Tennessee did blow them out. And I'm also looping Swain into this so that people don't say, what do you know? Swain knows. And uh, he also was skeptical of that. I mean, the the point spread was two and a half to three points going in for a reason. Now, I didn't know that there was going to be a fumbled kickoff to open the game where Tennessee would have an instant score. And that's one play. But it, it set the tone and put more pressure on LSU. It affected how Brian Kelly was coaching. But that's the Tennessee effect. That's the Josh Heupel effect. This offense, how good it is, it changes how coaches call games. We'll see if that's the case this week with Alabama. Alabama has its its own questions on the offensive side, but th- that's the strength of Josh Heupel, Hendon Hooker, and everybody else on offense, what they're able to do. It applies pressure, and if you make mistakes and you get behind even more and you have to play catch-up against Tennessee's offense, maybe you can come back, but I'd say good luck and I'd say most often you fall behind like LSU did. You're going to have a result like LSU did, getting run out of its own stadium. Josh, I know you saw the scene there towards the end of the football game. I mean, there were probably, gosh, I don't know. I'm so I'm not Jimmy Hans. I'm so bad at you know playing the numbers game, but there were a lot. There were a lot of fans that stayed, came down to that lower bowl in the south end zone, mm-hmm. and it was a party there right after the game was over. What a scene! It was loud. It felt like, and it looked like a Tennessee home game just from the camera uh, camera shots and everything. I mean, obviously it wasn't, but I mean, it was, it was a great look for Tennessee, uh, you know, in a football game on the road. LSU is not like a trip to Vanderbilt, not like a trip to South Carolina or to Athens. I mean, it's, it's down there, right? 
Um, what a scene from the Tennessee faithful. And I mean, there's a lot of people that watch this show and listen to the show that were DMing me and texting me and stuff. And I mean, there were a lot of people down there. Yeah, for sure. And you know, whether fans knew that a blowout was going to happen or not, I think fans have been able to sense that this team is capable of doing something special and knew that Tennessee was a favorite at, at LSU. I mean, how often does that happen? We've talked about that going in and then for the game to play out the way that it did, it was a true celebration. So think about there are a lot of Tennessee fans that live in either Louisiana or close to Louisiana that were able to get there or drove down from Tennessee, wherever they ended up from. Vol Nation is all over, but that have been waiting on that kind of game, a big time opponent. LSU is one of the biggest names in college football. And to be able to have that kind of showing, I wrote an article after the game talking about Tennessee fans waiting for so long on that kind of win. Think about it, Neyland Stadium, Alabama's done it, Florida fans have done it where their team is blowing Tennessee out and Tennessee fans leave late because like, yeah, I, I can't stay around to watch this anymore. And the other oh. fans kind of took over. This was Tennessee's chance to do that. This was Tennessee fans with this frustration that has been building and growing and accelerating over the last 15 years, being able to celebrate. I thought about that with players, with uh, coaches on Tennessee's football team that knew how they were being talked about a year ago, former players, uh, guys that have, you know, guys that have been in the NFL and they've been dealing with locker rooms of Georgia and Florida and Alabama and LSU players making fun of them on Sundays after how Tennessee played on Saturdays. They're getting the laugh now. So just good for everybody th uh, to see that. Now, uh, it, it's also created a belief in what Tennessee can do which is great. That That's why this week is more fun as well, because there's belief that Tennessee can build on the win against Florida, the blowout at LSU, to have a real shot at Alabama for the first time in a long time. Yeah, and, and on that, um, it's kind of twofold here. Like, you're 5-0, you're 2-0 in SEC play. You've got the number one scoring offense in the SEC, one of the best offenses in the country. You know, things are going well. Um, but I think every Tennessee fan will say, well, there's Alabama, there's Georgia coming up. Mm -hmm. those are going to be tough. And sure, can Tennessee win those games? Absolutely. There's no reason to say Tennessee has no chance because Tennessee absolutely has a chance. It's going to be tough. But again, I think if Tennessee goes in there and if you lose to Alabama, you're still a top 10 football team. You go in there, you lose to Georgia, you're still a top 10 football team. This is still a good football team. You might not win those games, but that still shouldn't take away from what this team's already accomplished and what it can accomplish this year. But still, you know, I'm, I'm looking at glass half full. I understand that. But Tennessee, Alabama this weekend, you and I were talking off the air for the first time in six, seven years. Tennessee realistically has a chance to win this football game. That's huge. What must happen for Tennessee to pull off this upset? Yeah. And the last time we went into this game talking about Tennessee with a shot to beat Alabama realistically was 2016. And actually pregame kickoff, when you start to hear about the injuries that Tennessee had and the players that were unavailable and then Alvin Kamara gets injured early, it was a it was a, a demolition in Neyland no. State. It was really ugly to watch. This is not that. Uh, Tennessee is going in. Actually, I know there's the Tillman question, but I, I would say with a health advantage compared to Alabama because of their quarterback situation and Tennessee's offense, what it's capable of doing, what it's proven it can do at this point. Eric, I think that's realistically where the conversation is. Tennessee has to prepare to go score points. Bryce Young or no Bryce Young, Tennessee's defense stepped up in a big way, I thought, on Saturday. And I, I think is somewhere in between what some of the numbers say, but it's not a great Tennessee defense. I don't think anybody's making that case either. So expect Alabama to be able to score. Tennessee has to apply pressure. Uh, I, I think of last year's Ole Miss-Alabama game. I think Tennessee needs to be smarter than Ole Miss was. I thought Lane Kiffin was too aggressive going in. Remember that game where Lane makes the let's get your popcorn ready conversation, uh, throws his headset down. Uh, if you look at the, the odds makers, they're saying Tennessee has a better chance going in than Ole Miss did in that game. But Ole Miss was a little too aggressive, didn't take some points early, and then it had to play catch up too much. But Alabama scored 42 in that game. Uh, you have to plan to score 30 plus in this game to have, I think, a, a real chance. But Tennessee's capable of doing that. Tennessee has gone uh, clo 40 or close to 40 in the two SEC games, 38 and 40 points against Florida and LSU. And it's going to be more difficult. There are more talented players on Alabama side, but I think schematically Tennessee is going to be able to come up with some ways to get guys open at wide receiver. You just expect that to be able to happen. And then you have Hinden Hooker, who uh, to this point just handles everything so well. Have to protect him, have to take care of the football. The, the ball came out twice against LSU, and Tennessee fell on it uh, from the quarterback position, then a running back fumble where the ball goes out of bounds. 
if the, if that ball bounces to Alabama this time, then you're probably going to run out of a chance to win the game. So th- those little things, the cliche things we talked about, the coaches I know preach, they matter more in this kind of game because I mean, you obviously have less margin for error. You're, you're an underdog in this game, but Tennessee has a really good chance to win the game because the offense is one of the best in the country. And 12 penalties for 125 yards, Gotta that will get up. you beat yeah. against Alabama. Sure. 100%. Uh, you're exactly right. It's I sound like a football coach, but the little things in games like this, when you're yeah. a nine and a half point or seven and a half point dog going up against the top ranked team in the country or number three, top five, whatever they are, that type of stuff will get you beat. So um, it's going to come down to it. Last thing, man. Hey, let's just have a little fun here. If Tennessee were to win on Saturday, mm-hmm. what's the scene at Neyland? What's the scene in Knoxville Saturday nights, early Sunday morning? Well, I'll be at the stadium like you, so I'm supposed to be covering it, but um, I don't know. I'm, I might hightail it out of there and start driving north or south somewhere because Knoxville might explode, so I got to get out of <laughs> Knoxville. But uh, it's just it's it's going to be uh, everything that you could probably imagine going in or what you might remember. I mean, th- there is legitimacy going in to compare – this game, how big it is, it's it's the biggest game since. You know, that that question, fill in the blank. Well, the games that going in based on rankings and the records of the teams and what is on the line potentially with a win, I mean, it goes back to the 90s when Tennessee was competing for national championships and won one in 98. So I'm not saying Tennessee is going to go win a national title, but I mean, if Tennessee wins, which is your question here, well, then Tennessee is going to be talked about as a very real playoff team as – one of the top two maybe contenders to win the SEC, at, at least legitimately one of the th- the big three still with Alabama and Georgia because that Georgia game is still looming. So whatever you're imagining going in, Saturday could be like if Tennessee wins, Tennessee ends the streak against Alabama, it can be that and more.